friends, today is going to be the TBR takedown for the month of October. It's everybody's favorite time of the month. TBR takedown time. Because this is one of my highest viewed videos, I do want to take a moment to say I will be linking in the description box down below a post on my community tab where I am doing an AMA, much like last year. So if you have any questions you'd like to ask me relating to uh, writing, reading, planning, the World Wide write a my life, anything you want to ask me about, please feel free to leave a comment on that post on my community tab if you would like to send it anonymously to me via dm on instagram you can do that as well my instagram all that's linked down below uh much like last year i will be using those for videos in december so if you have any questions comments concerns that's where you can leave that Anyway, moving on to the show that you're here for. If you are new here, the TBR Takedown is a game that I've been playing trying to get my physical unread TBR shelf down from a really high number down to about 50. My goal by the end of this year was 100. Are we gonna make it? Probably not, but there's still hope for us yet. Okay, so we are gonna start with my purchases for the month. We'll talk about which ones count and which ones did not. This is also my haul portion, so I will go over what the books are about with you. And then we'll go into the books that I read, and then we'll go into books I DNF'd or unhauled at the end if we have any. Spoiler alert, we do this month. Okay, let's talk about books that we hauled. The first is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. I have already read this, so it does not count. But if you don't know, this book follows our main character, Olive, who starts fake dating a professor at her college. Not her professor, but a professor who she's not tied to in any way. It's not creepy. She is a third year PhD candidate. So like, she's older. She's got her shit together. It's not weird. They start a fake dating thing. This has all of the romance, all of the fake dating tropes, every fake dating trope you could want. I just, they're, I love this book so much. Um, I'm sure you've been hearing people screaming about this all over booktube. So you don't need me to continue to scream about it to you, but I love it. It's fantastic. If you like adult romances, highly recommend. Next is Other Boys by Damien Alexander. This is a comic, a mid-grade, and a memoir all in one. So this book follows uh, some of Damien's experiences in primary and middle school, basically about his life and about how a lot of people in his family and outside of his family did not agree with the fact that he was more into what are traditionally known as girl toys for voices, boy toys. Ooh, a boy toy. You could all use one of those. This does have some darker topics to it as well. Um, it does involve death of a parent, death of a grandparent, uh, some homophobia, things like that. Know that going in. I've already read it, uh, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> also, artwork, y'all. It pretty. Uh, what else did we get this month? We also got Isn't It Romantic by Lisa K. Adams. I have already read this as well, so this does not count. This is the fourth book in the Bromance Book Club series. The series as a whole follows these guys that are like predominant in their fields as far as like athletes, musicians, um, businessmen, um, government types. There's a few governmental types in there. Uh, and basically they start a a book club where men read romance novels, which they call manuals, to help them learn how to deal with the women in their life as far as like relationships and things like that. Um, this is the fourth book. This follows the Russian and his wife Elena. And I already read this, so again, doesn't count. You know what else doesn't count? Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega, because I have already read this. I read this last year. Um, during the spooky season and I really enjoyed it. It is about uh, Lucille and about how she can still see the f members of her family after they've died. And the ghosts kind of hang out in her house and her best friend whose grandma is a witch and her grandma's cat. I don't remember all of like the main plot points because I've read so much mid-grade spooky in the last couple of years that they're all starting to blend together in my brain. But essentially... <laughs> something starts happening to the ghost that she sees and so her and her best friend try to 
um, help the ghosts in her life overcome what is trying to take over them. Um, and again, grandmother's a witch. Uh, the tabby cat's name is Chunk. I loved this book. I had to have it. I pre-ordered a copy of the paperback and it came this month. Next we have A Curse and Ash by Julie Zantopoulos. This book follows Ashlyn who is part fae, kind of royalty, and also part human but witch. She has this detective -y job where she helps the police officers deal with magical crime because she lives close to uh, the veil between the fae world and the human world and Throughout the course of this book, she meets a Ravdi named Riordan, which means he is like tied to her magically and helps her use her magic. And also we get to hang out with her hunky fae prince betrothed, who she's like not really into, uh, but they're also childhood friends. And there's like some serious polyamory going on in here. And I've already read it. And yeah, so uh, also hold this this month. I think this is technically last month's Owl Crate, but it is Lake's Edge by Lyndall Clipstone. Uh, I'm pretty sure this was another one that just got here late. Owl Crate was a little behind for a little while. Um, so this book follows our main character, Violetta, and her brother, I think his name's Arian. And they were abandoned as children. Their village was burnt down because it was like full of sickness. They escaped. Some old lady took them in and raised them. And then her brother has like these weird magical shadow things that kind of haunt his dreams and haunt his sleep. And he is found out by this guy called the Monster of Lake's Edge. He's actually like the count or the the guy who's like the head of their province. I don't know. I don't know the logistical rules of that. Um, but essentially they're taken to his castle because he wants to study and or use the brother's powers for his own deeds. So there's that. And then the last book that we are hauling this month is Jade Fire Gold. I did not look this up prior to sitting here. Um, so the author's name is June Tan. There's a middle name in there, but it's all consonants. So when I read this book for you, I will have learned how to pronounce the author's name. I have not even read the description of this book yet because I just got here. It follows our main character, An, um, was found as a child, has no memory of her past, only a dark secret, magical powers that would mean her imprisonment if they were discovered. But when on secret is accidentally exposed, she's sent to the Imperial Palace to await her fate. Altan's real name was once known throughout the Shy Empire. When his family was murdered and his birthright hijacked, he lost everything. Now with a new name and vengeance on his mind, he intends to gain it all back, even if it means entangling his very soul with the dark and dangerous magic from which he might never escape. When Altan encounters On and her mysterious abilities, he sees in her a path to reclaiming the throne. Their tenuous alliance is on the verge of becoming something more when the depths of On's dark powers are awakened and the two realize restoring the Empire might come at a far deadlier price than they could have ever imagined. Sounds good. Again, no nothing other than what I just read to you. I have not heard of anybody who has read this, so I have no clue. <laughs> also in the, the haul this month of things that does not count is this gorgeous edition of Addie LaRue. Um, the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by B.E. Schwab. It is the illustrated anniversary edition. How many times, how many, how many times have you ever seen a book get a fucking anniversary edition on its one year anniversary? Like, so first off, this cover is gorgeous. Second off, the edges are painted in these really pretty flowers uh, and the top and bottom are just the gray and then it's the white with the gray flowers. Uh, also, <laughs> we're gonna take off the dust jacket here and show you this beautiful thing. So the entire cover, front and back, is those same flowers but in silver. It also has a ribbon. I'm here for it. Also, these end pages are been fucking tastic. Uh, here's the other one. And the entire midsection of this book is fan art. So it has artwork through the middle of the book 
um, by different artists, different fan arts, um, and they're all credited, of course. And it's just so stunning. And I, <laughs> I cannot, this book is so gorgeous, so well put together, just fantastic. I'm not going to tell you what Addie LaRue is about because if you don't know, you clearly have never been on booktube and this is one of my favorite books of my favorite reads. I vaguely have memories of reading this while sitting at the park waiting for Danica to get done playing softball this summer. So um, I know I loved it and I want to read it again and I wish I could read it again for the first time. But I can't because well, I mean, I could if I hit myself in the head really hard and I get amnesia, but that seems like a lot of work for, for a book. She here. She gorgeous. And now we will go over the books that I have read. These I go through in the order which I read them this month and I will tell you if they count or not because a lot were ebooks or audiobooks or arcs or things that I don't own copies of as well as a lot of books off of my physical TBR finally. Um, so pay attention to the numbers or to the words coming out of my mouth. Yes? Okay. Uh, first we have The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates, which does not count because that was an ebook. The all-new sequel, uh, Hocus Pocus, etc, etc. A Curse and Ash by Julie Zantopoulos. A Wicked Magic by Sasha Lawrence. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter by Seth Graham Smith. The Project by Courtney Summers. Spirit Hunters by Ellen O. The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling. Moment of Truth by Phoebe Rivers. The Orphan Witch by Paige Crutcher, I believe, and that was an arc. A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. The Ivies by Alexa Dunn. Spirit Hunters, The Island of Monsters by Ellen O. The Lighthouse Witches by CJ Cook, which was an arc. Giving Up the Ghost by Phoebe Rivers. Witch, Volume 8, I believe these are technically by Elisabetta Ganon. Lake's Edge by Lindo Clipstone. The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins, which was an audiobook. Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall, which was also an audiobook. Not a Happy Family by Sherry LaPena, and Other Boys by Damian Alexander. I also had some DNF slash unhauls this month, and they are The Last of August by Brittany Cavallaro, The Silver Witch by Paula Braxton, and The Return of the Witch by Paula Braxton. If you want to know any of my full thoughts on the books that I read this month or unhauled and why I might have unhauled them, you can check out my wrap up, my mid month wrap up, my end of the month my wrap up, or my most recent arc review. I'll link all of those down below for you to peruse if you so choose. Uh, essentially, I believe we started at 129 books. Don't know if I said that at the beginning, but if I didn't, it's been up here the whole time. Uh, started at 129 and we're ending at 117. So for once, I finally killed it. Also, I read 21 books this month and then DNF unhauled three. So like it was kind of hard not to kill it, but also could have been so much better if I had focused and prioritized more of the books that I actually own instead of books that I don't own yet. But as you could see by the beginning of this video with my haul, I am trying to do more of like, because I do listen to a lot of my books via audio or ebook format, I have really been focusing on borrowing things from the library when I can and making sure I like it before I buy it. And then I buy it and I buy like 23 copies. It's fine, but it's better than buying things that I don't enjoy because I already have one giant bag of books that needs to go and I'm starting on a second one. So uh, that's a great time. So basically I'm at 117. I wanted to be under 100 by the end of the year. Don't know if that's going to happen, but it's, it's, it, it, it is what it is. Um, I currently have the rest of November and December to read them. I have to read 17 books, not buy any, and only read books that are on my TBR. And already I'm listening to one that's not on my TBR. So that's going well. Yeah. Wish me luck y'all. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!
I'm gonna say